what is the actual deal with keyword lists in Elixir? Are they like maps? Are they somehow related to tuples? What are they good for? Do we have to use them? Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, we are going to talk about keyword lists and this is just gonna be a quick tip. Let's have a look at it. I think keyword lists are really one of the areas in Elixir that uh, syntactic sugar saves us a lot of effort later on, but it makes it a little confusing at the beginning. So we'll make a keyword list here. And a keyword list is just a list of tuples where every tuple has two elements and the first one is an atom. So first one we'll say key one, and that's going to be a value, which is an atom. And then we'll make another tuple, and this tuple will have an atom key two, and then it'll have a string, some other value. This pair of tuples, this list of two tuples, is a keyword list. You can see as soon as I hit return, we now have this shorthand syntax where the tuples kind of disappear. The opening and closing braces are gone, and now the colon has moved from the left side of key one and key two to the right sides. Looks a little bit like a map, but it's not a map. It's, it's actually a list. So that means it has all the performance characteristics of a list. Let's make another one. We can actually define these directly with the shorthand syntax. So we could say foo, and foo is gonna be 12, and bar will be 28. And since these are lists, they're enumerable, and we can do an enum.map and manipulate them, so keyword two. Now this is a list of two tuples, so that means in order to transform it, we'll have to uh, match the whole tuple in a function like this, match the key and the value, and we'll transform that into another tuple with the same key and the value divided by four. And let's see what that looks like. Uh, we need an end as well. So now we see foo 3.0 bar 7.0. And they're also collectible. So we can use enum.into just like we could with anything else that's collectible. And we'll convert keyword one into a map like so. Uh, as I said though, they're not maps. Uh, with a map, the key can be anything. It doesn't have to be an atom. Check out my uh, video on map syntax. It's actually a little bit crazy in parts. If we try to make a keyword list with something, say we, we have something that is not an atom, then we'll get an error here. It's got to be an atom. So what do we use keyword lists for? Uh, we use them a lot when we're passing optional arguments to a function. So remember how I already said that the braces of the tuples disappear when you use a keyword list. As long as the list is of pair tuples and the first element of every pair is an atom, it's a keyword list and you'll see this syntax. Well, actually, even the braces or even the brackets will disappear when you're using a keyword list in uh, in something longer, and it's the last item in it. Here's an example from a real-world app. This is Alchemist Camp, where my tutorials are hosted. You can see in the render functions, this is a Phoenix controller here. In the render functions, we're passing in article, article, comment, change set, comment, change set. In actuality, this is a keyword list. So we're really calling render with a con, the name of the template that we want to render, and then this list of keywords. And actually this list is more like this. It's an article atom, and then another tuple here where comment change set is an atom and we're passing in whatever change set like that. But this is kind of noisy, it's a lot of typing, nobody likes typing all of those braces and brackets and so forth. So we can just do this and we get a nice smooth syntax where it looks like we're just putting in uh, any number of arguments we want to. It's really just one keyword list. 
And that's what keyword lists excel at. Remember I said they're lists, they're linked lists. So accessing an element in a keyword list is going to be slow if it's a big list. In this case, we have really short lists. So let's look at keyword list one again. We can do the same kind of syntax you might do with a map here. We can do key one to get the first key out of it. And there's also a keyword.get syntax, which looks a little bit like map.get. So keyword.get, key w1, and key one. We'll do the same thing. Unfortunately, we cannot use the access syntax that a map uses. So they're not exactly the same. And keep in mind that however you access an element of a keyword list, this way or this way, or some other way, you've got to traverse everything from the head of the list to that element. So accessing the last element of the list will take time in proportion to the length of the list. That's not really a problem though, if you're just passing in a keyword list for optional parameters. Assumably, you don't have thousands of optional parameters in your functions. I hope not at least. So it's just a quick and easy way to get at it. And if you need to, then you can transform your keyword list into a map or into some other structure. Um, so hope you found that useful and I'll see you next time. If you learned something from this Elixir tip, then go to my newsletter, type in your name, your email, and join. I'll send you summaries with links to my newest tutorials, articles, interviews, and projects. Of course, you can unsubscribe at any time.